Hey guys, in the previous video, we talked about custody of children. So today we're going to talk about care and control of children. What is an order for care and control? Well, an order for care and control determines which parent the child should live with, which in Singapore usually is with the mother. The parent given care and control of the child will be the primary caregiver, who is in charge of handling the child's daily necessities is responsible for their day-to-day -day life, such as going to school, uh, their meals and all that, the child's uh, bedtimes, transport arrangements. Section 1262B of the Women's Charter provides that where one parent is uh, granted uh, care and control of the child, the other parent will be uh, granted access to the child. So the parent uh, who the child does not live with can have access and visit the child. Uh, that uh, the parent who has uh, care and control over. As I mentioned earlier, in Singapore, care and control is usually awarded to mothers in most cases and it is very difficult for fathers to uh, fight with mothers for care and control. Uh, the parliament, for some reason, uh, thinks that mothers are uh, probably better caregivers for children. An exception to this is where the mother agrees to the father's request for the father to have care and control if the father is in a better position to have care and control of the child, perhaps because of better finances, closer to schools, or some other reasons which uh, uh, the court will examine before the, making the order to grant the father care and control. If a father does not get care and control of the children, the father who wish to, wishes to have care and control of the child may, cons may consider taking an application for an order for shared care and control so that they will have uh, shared responsibilities over the care and control of the children. Under shared care and control, the time spent with the children will be split equally among both parents. Nonetheless, to succeed in obtaining care and control, the father must have been the primary caregiver of the child prior to divorce. Therefore, if the father, before the, uh, the divorce uh, application was made, uh, was the main caregiver uh, of the child. Uh, perhaps if the wife was usually overseas on business trips or the wife uh, had a full-time job and the father quit his job to stay at home, take care of the child, uh, uh, attend to the child's daily needs, uh, bedtime, meals and all that. So under such circumstances, it's, uh, the father has a better chance of uh, getting an order for care and control uh, of the child or even shared care and control. Now, shared care and control of uh, children is unlikely to be granted where school-going children are involved due to the inconvenience of having to travel between two homes frequently. Shared care and control is also unlikely to be granted in situations where the parents' relationships are very, uh, very acrimonious, very hateful, and they have different parenting styles. For example, the parent may, uh, may want the child to be very uh, uh, academic and want them to excel so that uh, the father may want the child to study for three or four hours every day, have a private tuition on every day of the week, whereas the mother is uh, just bored up, she couldn't be bothered about it. So under such circumstances where different parenting styles, uh, it is unlikely the court would give a, a shared care and control order. Also, where the parties already have joint custody over the child, shared care and control is unlikely to be deemed uh, necessary uh, under the uh, circumstances. So thanks for watching this video on care and control of children.